Hello, my name is Orla Prendergast. I teach on the outdoor education degree in Castle Bar. So outdoor education has three main elements. So it has the outdoor adventure activities, environmental education, and then social and personal learning that goes with those activities. So on the course, you will learn how to be an instructor in a range of adventure sports. So we'd look at things like kayaking, hill walking, rock climbing and surfing. So you gain nat uh, national governing body qualifications in those activities. And also we look at all the safety management of those activities, so the risk assessments that would go with them. The first aid element would obviously be an important part of that as well, and we'd cover things like water safety. But also, apart from the activities, it's really important for our graduates that they can interpret the, the landscapes that they're working in. So they're not just bringing the group out hill walking, they're also telling the story of the formation of that landscape, how the mountains were built, the underlying geology and rocks, they're looking at the plants and animals they might see on that hill walk, the history, the archaeology of the castles and monasteries that they encounter on their sea kayaking trips. So there, it's a real sort of broad, holistic look at that landscape and trying to make it more educational for the groups they bring out, whether it's a transition year, a leaving cert group doing ecology studies, or it could be a group of emerging American tourists exploring the west of Ireland. And also, I suppose those landscapes can be quite fragile, and we've noticed maybe the last 10 years a huge increase in outdoor recreation in Ireland. But it's really important then that we manage that increase. Those big numbers can sometimes bring problems with erosion, overcrowding, conflict between different user groups. So we look a lot at outdoor recreation management and how to sort of develop sustainably the precious resource that we have in this country. So that would be sort of the second area. And then I suppose the activities sometimes can be just a tool for personal learning, for growth and development. So people push and challenge themselves doing the activities. So looking at things like resilience um, that you can gain from doing the activities. The whole sense of the, the mental health benefits that we get from spending time in nature. So the areas was of green exercise, blue exercise, nature therapy. They're all sort of growth areas and we will discuss those when we're out doing the adventure activities. So our graduates would work in a wide variety of areas. So obviously some of them would work in your traditional adventure activity centres such as say Killery or Delphi, working as instructors, managers in those centres. The education and training boards have a range of centres throughout the country such as uh, Ackle and Petersburg, so again we have a lot of our graduates who work there. The whole area of environmental education, so working maybe with green schools, clean coasts, field studies council, um, and again bringing kids out into sort of forests, doing ecology studies with them there, working for the National Parks and Wildlife, so the whole environmental education area. Forest schools, that sort of area of learning outdoors is increasing, so again some of our graduates would work there, um, some would work with very young kids even in the under sixes, um, and then the youth work area where you're sort of using the adventure activities more as a medium to work with the groups and you can nearly use the activities as sort of developmental or nearly like therapeutic to help people overcome challenges in their life to build up resilience so they're better able to respond to difficulties and crises and they gain sort of confidence from that um, and friendships develop doing those activities that can last a very long time that are very very strong bonds that are formed reasonably quickly in a, an intense setting such as you know a, a long hill walk or a trip down the river so it's, it is very varied um, and then, like I said, even the whole area of countryside recreation management, with the huge growth in adventure sports activities, we have to manage our mountains, so looking at how to prevent erosion, path building, um, how to educate people to protect the mountains, so that's a very big growth area, We're looking at sort of things like rural tourism and sustainable development there, and graduates would work as countryside recreation officers, or, um, yeah, or that sort of area, we'd say councils and so on. And then even graduates would work with um, governing bodies, say Canoe Ireland, Mountaineering Ireland, whoever it happens to be, again, promoting the sport and encouraging young people to get involved, helping with instructor training, coaching at a high level. Some of our graduates would set up their own guiding business and they would run rock walking tours, cycling tours, sea kayaking tours. So the whole adventure tourism industry has grow, grown hugely and there's huge potential in, the, in that area for people to set up their own business. 
So there's also a range of study abroad options for our students as well. So we have links with Western Carolina University and students can spend a year over there, spend their second year and they study parks and recreation management. So that's a fantastic opportunity to explore the Appalachian Mountains and to study in a, sort of in a different context. And we also have an Erasmus program with a college in Sweden where you can look at Nordic ecology. We also have recently started a link with a college in Norway and again they have a, a year-long program there that you can do and they would look at expeditioning, skiing, rock climbing in Norway, um, Arctic exploration, so it's, it's quite a varied program, the Norwegian one as well.